Hey guys, welcome to part two of our little wooden crate tutorial. Uh, in this part, we are going to unwrap our simple little model. So let's flick over to 3D Studio Max here to see what we've got. So we left off last time with our little simple crate. All I've done here is I've added a material to that. Just if you press M on your keyboard, you'll get your material editor. And we're just uh, selecting a blank material, uh, selecting all our objects. And hitting this little button here, assign material to selection. And that's all we've done there. That's just why it's changed color from the last video. The other wee thing I'm going to do is take that material and call it, uh, let's just say, create. Oops, create. If we had uh, went into Substance Painter after this, uh, that material for the texture set would just have been called default 08 or whatever that was. Uh, so it's always nice to know what it is. So we can call it maybe just create material instead. Something like that. Just something that we can uh, identify more easily. Okay, so what we want to do is I'd run, uh, unwrap this guy. So we're going to select all the objects. Remember now, the planks here, the diagonal ones, are separate objects. But we can unwrap everything together. So just select everything. Go to your modifier list. Go to unwrap UVW and apply that modifier and you'll see we get some green seams applied to everything here and those are the scissor cuts that we get now what we want to do is open UV editor and we're going to zoom out uh, and the UV editor is where we will basically take this uh, 3D shape and cut it up into pieces and lay them out flat as if we were taking a cardboard box and flattening it out so that we can then paint on it. Uh, so what we want to do is I'm going to select this little polygon button here. I'm going to drag and select over everything. And that will highlight the whole model. Uh, a little pro tip for you is uh, what works in one window doesn't work in the other. So if I zoom out here and I select everything here, note that it does not select the back facing ones. That's something that can often catch you out a wee bit. So a better way to do it is if you want to select everything select in the UV window and select over that and then everything will be selected so there we go and uh, what do I want to do now I want to get rid of these pre-existing green seams I want to make my own seams in this so what I'm going to do is with everything selected I'm just going to hit this little button here over in edit UVs that says quick planar map and when I do that it's going to give me a a projection of this model onto this texture space and you can see there the projection is actually coming out of the angle of this yellow square. Now we don't really need to worry about that too much. Uh, that's not really what the purpose of projection is. I just find it's a great way of getting rid of those seams. And this gives us uh, a point to start with. So what I'm going to do is go drag this off of my texture space. So our textures are going to be square image files. That then sort of shrink wrap around the 3D model. And this uh, square represents that texture file that we'll eventually make. It'll all make sense once I do it. If you haven't seen any of my other tutorials, it'll make sense as we go now. Uh, let's just get stuck in here. So what I want to do is, I want to start breaking off individual pieces of this and flattening them out. And uh, laying them all side by side. So I'm going to take this plank here. And you'll see that that then selects in here. I'm going to hit this little break button. Now, because it's a separate object, I don't need to break it off from anything. But then I'm going to hit uh, straight in selection and you'll see that it gives us uh, those three polygons sort of separated side by side. But the problem is they're not quite proportionally correct. This middle polygon should be thicker than the ones either side. So what we do is we hit uh, this little relax until flat button. And now it went instantly there and that was really nice. But I guarantee you, the next time I do it, it will probably cause 3ds Max to stutter and it might want to take a few seconds to actually relax. So we'll just uh, keep working on that. And uh, I don't need to hit break, but I'll hit it just because it's a second nature to hit it. Hit straighten. That straightens it. And you'll notice again, these are very disproportionate with each other. So we hit the relax, and that one's relaxed. That's not too bad. Now you'll notice here that these two are completely different sizes to each other. 
I'm not going to worry about that for now. We can rescale everything so it's all in line with each other again later on. But um, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do all four sides of this. I'm going to look at each individual uh, type of piece here, demonstrate it once, and then I'm going to pause the video and continue on. Just so you don't have to watch me unwrap the whole object, go to show you how to unwrap it, and then I'll let you unwrap it yourself, and I'll show you my result at the end that you can compare to. So the next wee piece that we might want to unwrap is these uh, flat panels here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have break. Now in this case, we will need to have break. And you'll see a little green seam appear here. We break that. That little seam turned green. Let's cut this into its own separate object. And now over here, I can move that. And I will just pull you over. Put you over here. I'll put all these to the side. I'll show you why we have to break this. If I select this one here. Uh, in fact, no, I'll select this one. And if I try and drag that as is, you can see we've got a lot of lines connected to it. And that's actually these wee top surfaces here. If I click on that one, you'll see that's that is. And what we're doing is we're effectively stretching it and pulling it. So we need to we need to break it, we need to cut it apart first before we pull it away. So that's that piece. And we'll just pull it down here. Same thing here. Uh, break and this one you'll notice that because of our projection it's appearing sideways but if we break it we hit straighten elements and then we hit relax now here we go you'll see the relax down at the bottom here little timers going up probably take about 15 seconds but then that will flatten it out the correct way so we just need to wait on that going and this is what often takes the, the unwrap the longest uh, is just waiting for that relax uh, so there we go that's it flattened out but you'll notice again sometimes when we use that relax it changes the size of things so these are out of scale with the rest uh, let me see but again we'll fix that in the end so we're going to continue doing that for all those we'll do it for the top surface the only one that's different is this bottom surface and in that case we want to just select everything and we're going to Break that, straighten it, and relax. Again, going to take 15 seconds. Uh, we can't really do anything while that's doing that. So we just have to, uh, literally just have to let 3D Studio Max do its thing. It's a really, really funny thing. That no matter how many polys you choose, it um, it takes almost exactly 15 seconds every time. Uh, another thing I noticed, I was trying this before, for some reason, it brings this bottom surface very, very small. So I'm just going to expand that up. I'm holding the control key to keep it in proportion. And just bring it up in size. So that probably not exactly right, but again, we'll rescale it later. Uh, then we want to start looking at these pieces. And what I want to do is, although at the minute they're just sort of continuous uh, bands all the way around, I want to make it more realistic so that it's a vertical plank and a horizontal plank, and a vertical plank, horizontal plank. So I'm going to break it up accordingly. So I'm going to take, say, this little piece, uh, break that, flatten it out. You can see there it's, the proportions are all messed up again. That relax until flat. Once more, we have to wait about 15 seconds, which is a real pain in the bum. Do, do, do. I don't know why this takes so long. There is uh, there is actually another button. The other thing as well, as you can see, that on this, uh, the the little flap here should be on the right, but it's actually on the left here. So, and um, that bottom piece on the UV unwrap is on the top. So what I'm going to do is just grab all this, and here at the very top of this menu, with a quick transform, just go wrap it around twice. It's always better to have it the right way up. Uh, there we go. So we're going to leave that there. Uh, and then what we would have is, say, these top and bottom pieces. That would just be this and the wee underside. And we do the same thing. We break. We straighten. And now that one's automatically rotated, that one, for some reason. Uh, there is another option. Instead of having relaxed until flat, we can do what's called a pelt. 
a pelt pill. Now, this is more used for if you're designing creatures and things, so you've got like, I don't know, a bison or a wolf, uh, and it's a lot of curvy surfaces, it will sort of kind of turn it to rubber and flatten it out. It distorts it a bit, but it flattens it out. If I hit quick peel here, uh, that actually works quite well in this case. Because it's such a simple shape, it has uh, straightened out quite nice. What can happen when we do this is that it will just randomly rotate it for you, which can be quite annoying. Uh, in this case, that worked out okay. If you want to be a wee bit quicker, you can maybe try that quick pill, but it won't always work. Um, the other thing it does, you saw there, that it um, it brought it up here and made it the full height. So every single piece that you quick pill will be stretched up to take the full height of the texture map. But seeing as we're going to rescale them all anyway at the end, that's maybe not a big deal. Uh, so, once again, we just want to orientate this correctly, so that wee flap there should be on the bottom. We'll select that whole piece and we will rotate counterclockwise. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to pause the video and keep unwrapping this. Every other bit will use one of those techniques I've already showed you, there's nothing going to jump out at you. So try and unwrap your own crate and we'll compare results uh, very shortly. Hey guys, welcome back. So I have unwrapped most of this uh, crate here and I just wanted to uh, jump back in before I uh, finish the whole thing. They point out something that I literally only just noticed right now. Uh, so I've, I've unwrapped everything except this wee top surface and I'm going to unwrap these last couple of planks. So we're going the usual uh, break methodology. We we'll break it off and then I would have hit straighten and then try to hit relax. Just one thing that I noticed, if I if I straighten it first of all, and then I hit pill, uh, you can see there where we're getting the pill, putting in a, a slight angle and magnifying it up, uh, which is a bit of a pain. But if we then hit straighten again and relax until flat, for some reason, whatever's going on underneath the hood, if you peel it first and then relax, it doesn't need to do that wee 15 second thing. So that will speed up your, uh, your workflow a good bit. Give that a try. It might just have been absolute coincidence that it's working on mine, but so far, every time I've tried it, that seems to work. Uh, another wee thing you can do as well, if we have two islands that aren't connected to each other, so let's say we have this side and this side. Uh, if I just select all these pieces. So these are two separate wee islands that won't touch. If I hit break, I hit peel. Uh, you can see there, it's, uh, it's done them both at the same time. If I hit straighten and hit relax, there we go. Instantaneous, we've done two pieces at once. And uh, awesome. That will speed up your workflow a little bit. So uh, peel, again, it's mostly used for orga organic stuff, but that could be quite handy to you. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to rotate these two, put them here. And this final piece, if I take you, I will break, I will straighten, peel, and relax. Oh, now that's an odd one. Oh, sorry, straighten again, and relax. There we go. So that's everything. I'm just going to turn you sideways. And what I've tried to do here with my unwrap is I've tried to get all of the, uh, all of the horizontal planks together all of the vertical planks together. Uh, up here is my four diagonal ones and then my uh, big panel pieces. Uh, as I said, they're all slightly different sizes. So what I'm going to do is select everything and I'm going to hit rescale elements. And you can see that that is just a, a couple of them sort of got bigger, a couple got smaller, and now they're all sort of in, in size with each other. Just when we've done that, if they were too close together, you might notice they're overlapping a wee bit, but don't worry about that. There's another little button. We've got all these pieces and we want to put them in here. If we just hit pack custom, you'll see that it uh, packs them all in. Now, actually, do you know what? I might I might undo that. I'm not too happy with that. As you can see, I had some vertical pieces, some horizontal pieces. Let me just see, did the, uh, did the horizontal ones stay horizontal? Uh... 
yes, they did in fact. All the vertical ones stayed vertical. Uh, I just want to check the orientations here. Can I turn off that checker? Yes, this little button will turn off the checker, just make it easier to see. I'm just going to double check a few of these to make sure that uh, the they are orientated the right way. I should say that there, little guy, is on the top side of that. Yep, that's okay. Uh, take another piece of random. You are above that. Okay, so the, the custom pack is good. It has kept everything. Ah, now let me see. I'm just looking. When I select this polygon, and it should obviously be connected to this panel. If you notice that you're going to get little blue lines here, they tell you the connecting edges. So when I select this one, you can see that what should be the top of the crate, this edge, is actually shown on the right here. So I'm just going to select this guy and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. There we go. Uh, let's see. Any of the rest of them are they the right orientation? As you, I can't even see. Uh, there's the blue line. That guy's okay. This one, uh, and it's connected to this little guy. I can just see from the blue line there. So like that. But that's the bottom side on the bottom side. Yeah, that's okay. So uh, that's grand. I am happy enough with this. That's a really nice unwrap. It's making good use of all the space. There's very little of it going to waste. So we could now take this and export it to Substance Painter. So I'm just going to close the UV window. I am going to... What else do I need to do? I've set my material just with the M key. So I've got that material, create material. That's okay. And we set the create to be more or less over the origin point. You can see the the origin point there underneath yeah i'm happy enough with that that's all good so i'm going to select oh wait right click go top level and then i'm going to select everything and go file export export selected and where do i want to go quick access does it have wooden create yes there we are and i'm going to call this one just my Oh, poly create. I actually tried a different version of this earlier on that didn't work. Uh, but hopefully this one will work. So we're exporting our FBX. Don't need to worry about anything here with no turbo smooth or anything because it's quite hard edge model. Just hit OK. And at this point, we are ready to move into Substance Painter. So we'll do that in video number three. And I will see you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, please paste them below. And I will see you in the next video.